Hey everyone, I'm really excited to be sharing the binary passage retrieval feature in Weave 8 This is a really exciting new software feature in the Weave 8 vector search engine that really reduces the memory requirements. So say you have a massive amount of vectors that you're trying to search through, this will really reduce the memories, enable all sorts of downstream applications and exciting things that we can do with this. So the structure of this video, we're gonna start off by understanding this 32X memory reduction with uh, the binary hash vectors. As uh, Edian has mentioned, there's, there's some more engineering technical details that prevent this from being uh, completely realized as a 32x memory reduction, but to be completely honest with you, I don't completely understand these details, so you'll have to wait until the WeVA podcast with Edian for, uh, to get the explanation from Edian. So we'll start off with the 32x memory reduction, understanding what this means, understanding how we can have this massive compression from a float 32 value into binary 0, 1 in each uh, vector index. Uh, then we'll look at the uh, paper itself and kind of understand the optimization task of learning to hash just so you have a sense of uh, how they optimize these vectors such that when they're binarized you don't lose too much information and it kind of prepares the model or the representation for this almost. Uh, then we'll kind of take a step back. This is SimCLR and look at these, just this kind of idea of vector embeddings to take a step back. Maybe this idea of, as mentioned in uh, Barlow Twins, they, they go to scaling up the dimensionality of the embeddings to be all the way up to 16,384. So Traditionally, that would be really untenable to have such a high dimensional vector with these, uh, you know, 32 bit floating points for each position. So maybe something like this and playing with high dimensional uh, continuous representations and then uh, learning to hash such that you have the uh, optimized lower uh, binarized representations. Maybe this could be a really interesting kind of idea. So then we'll also conclude by just looking at some cases. Say you have 60 million vectors. Well, now it helps you a lot to have the binarized representation and make it more memory efficient. And also kind of this vision of bringing this kind of spaces style interface to uh, vector search engines and how this kind of idea of um, having this compression makes it more memory efficient and makes this whole kind of vision more more realistic. So I really hope you enjoy this explanation of some ideas around binary passage retrieval and really check out this feature because it's super cool to see this uh, come to life in the WeV8 uh, software vector search engine. We'll begin with the end result of binary passage retrieval. What this does is a 32x memory reduction by reducing the memory that you need for each individual index of a vector representation of high dimensional data like images, text, genetic sequences, videos, whatever you're encoding with deep neural networks, and you compress it from using a 32-byte uh, floating value, as you can see with uh, Edian's calculation here, into a 0-1 binary value. So uh, there are a little more details to this, uh, as Edian has mentioned, and uh, you're going to have to wait until we do another podcast on the WeVA podcast to get the explanation from Edian, because I don't completely understand these details, but there's a little bit of an engineering thing as well that prevents the complete 32x realization, but you still have a massive memory reduction for the uh, whatever application. So so conceptually, when I first heard this idea, I thought it was really surprising, as did uh, Eddie and I think most people studying vector search engines to see that you could compress it like this is pretty crazy to think that you can, you know, because we think these like fine grained uh, values are so important for doing this dot product based or uh, like cosine angular distance based similarity search. But I think the thing is that there's so much information in kind of like the dimensionality of these vectors as you scale them up. These are examples of two eight dimensional vectors, but typically we have say 512, 1024 dimensional vectors. And as you're doing this optimization task, there's so much information in the dimensionality kind of that you get away with this kind of uh, binary compression. So it's really interesting to see this idea uh, working and achieving this kind of memory efficiency uh, gain. This idea was introduced in the paper, Efficient Passage Retrieval with Hashing for Open Domain Question Answering. So the high level problem is we're trying to use things like dense passage retrieval in order to retrieve information to supplement a question answering model. So for example, you'll have like the Wikipedia corpus and you ask it a question such as what is the atomic number of oxygen? And you want to use something like dense passage retrieval to return the Wikipedia article about oxygen or and at least like the section about the periodic table and that kind of information to supplement the language model where it can uh, maybe attend to the context of the retrieved information and say here it is the atomic number is eight so that kind of motivation of using these systems for uh, question answering so the idea behind uh, binary passage retrieval as outlined is to use these two different optimization loss functions you have a candidate generation and then you have a re-ranking so you start off with the high dimensional embedding E in the dimensionality of the vectors that come out. So to kind of jump ahead a little bit, you see in uh, this is an image from Barlow Twins. These are the dimensionalities of the embedding representation. So uh, this is SimCLR, this H sub I. 
this is what we're talking about as the representation of data. These are the vector representations. And you think about scaling up the dimensionality of these vector representations. So you start off with that E in that D and the D space is like 512, 1024 usually some more in that scale. So then you're going to convert it to a binary code by using this hashing function. So in the end, when you're deploying the system, you just take the sign of the each individual index. So I shown in the original image, you say, you know, greater than zero, one, less than zero, <laughs> zero, that kind of idea. So, uh, so to optimize it, though, you're going to use this uh, hyperbolic tangent and a beta uh, kind of uh, smoothening hyperparameter on each E. So you, once you pass it through this, you have this differentiable optimization and differentiable optimization is great for this kind of thing. And compared to say, you could just do this and then have like a straight through estimator where you say the gradient is one, or you can do something like this, which probably is better for optimization, but I haven't really completely explored this, but you imagine this kind of thing is better for optimization. So you start off with the uh, candidate generation, and this is where you uh, start with ranking by using the original uh, with the um, encoding. So this um, H hat, if you see the H hat, this is a margin loss where you have the uh, query and the positive and the query and a negative. So this kind of margin loss with these kind of like triplet based uh, contrastive learning objectives, maybe things like uh, in Andrew Ang's original kind of face recognition video, if you've seen that set of videos, you, it takes you through the triplet loss for like margin ranking. And anyway, so that kind of idea. So then in addition to the candidate generation, you have a re-ranking where you still use the original high dimensional vectors. So you see how you use the original vectors and you kind of align the, um, let me zoom in so it's easier to see it. So you use the original vectors, you align them with the positive hash encodings, and then you have similarly this normalization with the uh, with the looping through of the negatives or the J, which is like these in batch kind of sample negatives. So you combine these two loss functions, the margin and then the uh, re-ranking more normalized contrastive loss compared to this kind of max margin hinge loss kind of thing. And then overall, that's how you produce the optimization of the high dimensional and the uh, binarized encodings for this kind of optimization task. These memory savings will be really important for applications that have a massive amount of vectors. So for example, Kenius is working with 60 million vectors to have this uh, citation graph of academic papers. So when they have 60 million different vector embeddings, it becomes really important to have these kind of uh, memory reductions in order to really make this uh, feasible. So it's also really interesting for this vision of trying to deliver something like Hugging Face Spaces, these kind of demonstrations of Weaviate's vector search engine. So we have two things, uh, the Wikipedia demo and the Wikidata demo, these two examples of how you can do vector search. And uh, you can just click on the demo, it take you to the uh, to the console with the GraphQL front end. Similarly with uh, Weaviate, you have the uh, RESTful API or the GraphQL front end if you want to play around with these um, with these two examples of Wikipedia and Wikidata. So we're gonna wait until uh, we're gonna do a podcast, Eddie and I, where Eddie will explain further about all the details behind this. I don't completely understand how the, uh, how the really, the memory reduction, how it really works with implementation wise. It's like a whole skill set that uh, Eddie has that I don't really have that well, but it's gonna be really interesting to hear from him and learn more about all this coming together. Really exciting to see this and see the innovation in vector search engines continue. So I really hope you find this video interesting of uh, kind of going through different ideas I think I left this out, this kind of idea of um, a previous example of some kind of binary neural network. And at the time, I thought this idea was kind of crazy, this idea that you could have binary neural networks and this differentiable kind of optimization, these continuous representations is kind of what I thought made this thing work to begin with. But these kind of ideas are pushing that and exploring new opportunities, and it's really interesting to see. And generally, I think it'd be really interesting to kind of scale this up. Say uh, in Barlow Twins, I conclude by saying, you know, it's going up and to the right with uh, scaling up the dimensionality. So if you can have these high dimensional uh, vectors behind the scenes, and then you can learn to hash so that you have a lower dimensional thing, or uh, not a lower dimensional thing, but a, uh, something that requires less memory to store for the original search and the building up of the HNSW index, then you can go back to this thing to do the re-ranking or overall to just uh, contain the information before you compress it and enabling all sorts of inter interesting uh, downstream use cases enabled by requiring less memory. So I really hope you found this uh, video interesting. Please subscribe for more uh, deep learning and AI videos, as well as please subscribe to Semi Technologies for the upcoming episode of the Weaviate podcast that explains binary passage retrieval in further detail. Mm -hmm.